This is Minnesota episode two. Episode two. Did you like what was your, what was your favorite of the prequels? Of the prequels of sorry of the Star Wars prequels. Yeah, well, yeah, episode yeah. episode. Yeah. Oh, oh God. Well, it definitely have to be Revenge. Revenge of the Sith has to be my favorite one on that one. Um, is that when Obi Wan kicks him into the pile of lava? Yeah, and should have kicked him while he was down. Took his lightsaber and was like, "I loved you. You were my brother." But hey, all props to Ewan and way to go, uh, Kathleen Kennedy, for realizing you've done fucked up and didn't give Obi Wan a goddamn series. But now it's turned around this week that Obi Wan is coming back to the screen. Disney Plus, right? Yeah, he's getting his own series. He's getting his own series. And is it is it going to be Ewan? Ewan McGregor? Yeah, it was a big. Concert and an announcement and yeah. So, so so can I can I admit something? I sure. like I love I love episode four five six and I've in I didn't really like episode seven but like I've enjoyed Star Wars yeah. in general. Yeah. Um, I never saw episode three, and the reason I didn't see episode three is because I hated episode two. Oh wow! Yeah, see, there's a big gap between two and three, right? Uh, I have an interesting story about uh, watching episode two. Like I. I wanted to see episode two on opening night so bad and I didn't have the money to do it. And also my roommate came home and he was like, man, I've got to go and study for this big exam. I have this ticket to avenge the uh, attack of the clones. Do you want it? I'm like, because the movie starts in like 30 minutes. I'm like, yeah, I would love to, but I don't have a car to get there. He's like, take, take these keys, man, go ahead and do it. And I was like, Oh my God. <laughs> yes. And I drove there as reasonably good and then on under the speed limit as I could and uh, got there just in time for uh, I missed all the previews but I got like for the start yeah for like the scroll I like, sat dun, I sat dun, no dun, I dun, sat dun, down dun. To longer uh, in a galaxy far far away yeah. right dun, I got dun, dun, dun. Uh, yeah it was like <laughs> Yes, opening night. It was like, and I, I liked it. I liked episode two a lot more than I liked episode one for sure. But uh, yeah, it was it was great. And that was the weekend of my twenty uh, third birthday. Okay. Unpopular opinion. Sure. And this is probably because I'm younger than you. Sure. I was grade five or six when episode one came out. So it I was, spoke to you. Huge. I was I was the prime demographic for for that. episode one. Yeah. So like I. Fucking loved episode one. And before episode one, like I my next door neighbor introduced me to episode four, five, six. Nice. And we went to see episode one together. So like each week leading up to the release of episode one, he's he's introduced me to four and then five and then six. So I was just like, yes, yes, yes. And then one just blew my expectations as like this 12-year-old kid. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah. I was like, he's like, that was the best movie I've ever seen. And then two came out, and I was bored. I was happy I was with. Bored. I, I had to bring in tickets for episode one. I was nineteen. I saw it in Edmonton and uh, at Westmount, and I was super impressed with. I was like, "Whoa!" It was very political, and there was like slow moving times. But at the end of it, I was like, "There was far enough like lightsaber duels and action and overall war that I was impressed with it as a nineteen year old." Okay. Yeah. Darth Maul. Darth Maul was wicked badass. And he didn't die either. No, he didn't. He survived. <laughs> he still in the survived corner. and he's part of canon. Right? For those so. for those that don't know in the murder room, I actually have um hanging from the London Free Press, because that I grew up in London, Ontario. Uh the the title newspaper from the day that Star Wars episode one, The Phantom Menace, came out. Uh, which is like every saga has a beginning and it's got Obi-Wan Kenobi. With the light, is that Obi Wan Kenobi? Yeah, it's Obi Wan. Yeah, yeah. With the lightsaber, and trials this yet. is this is like the front page of the London Free Press on opening day. So I saved it because of how cool it was, and yeah. now it's hanging in here. Yeah. Um, so, it, uh, so yeah, that's that's my only Star Wars thing. I got a lot of Star Trek. Shit I'll have to here. work on getting some Star Wars stuff down here. I have like uh, replica lightsabers, full scale masks, uh, lots of posters. I have a boomerang. Ooh. Uh, <laughs> Right there, you then have that boom and shove it up your ass. You know what are talking about? Well, we, we needed a weapon down here, right? But like, <laughs> I'm not a, I, I'm, I'm really anti gun. And, um, you Fair know, enough. it's really easy to stab yourself with a knife. Um, so a boomerang. <laughs> I got a boomerang. That's our safety weapon. It came back to us. <laughs> it came right? back to us. <laughs> yeah, Guys, yeah. I love, I love, I love life. That's um, great. Kingsbury, what's what's been? Oh, actually, you know what? We're before we get into this, 
We are drinking. We're still drinking Overflow. Yeah, last, we're still drinking Overflow. Last Minnesota, we were drinking Overflow. We love it so much. We're drinking it again. Um, They're you know, part of a concert series that also another beer we like to drink. I wish I had some here right now, and I'm thankful that they now carry out by me uh, in Canada. They they gave us beer before, right? Yeah, and we Vinny, drink. And we talk about it on like episode one or two. One or two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Vinny Brewing Company. Vinny, Fuck yeah. Yeah, man. They're they're super awesome. Uh, we fisted each other. Uh, yeah, yeah, fisting. Super hot. No, I meant fist bump. Yeah, that's what I meant too. Shifty eyes. Anyway, um, no, yeah, Vimy Brewing Company, and they have another show coming up involved with the uh, same uh, Dirty Birds Colony Festival yeah. series. Episode and one. Go back to episode go back to, one. Go back to episode. Minnesota. Minnesota, Minnesota one. one. Well, also listen to episode one. Yeah, that was a great one. It was yeah, awesome. awesome. So, and it's Awesome's birthday today. We're recording right, this yeah. on Awesome's birthday. Happy birthday, Happy birthday awesome. awesome. You're awesome, awesome. <laughs> So anyway, that's happening, and uh, that show on um, October 18th, Friday night, it's going to be a killer one down at uh, uh, at Vimy Brewing Company, Loretta and Gladstone, enjoy their beer. Yeah, so once again, this is um, in Ottawa in October, we've got the Dirty Birds Comedy Festival coming out, it's going to be a lot of fun, uh, a nice way to showcase some great Canadian comedy talent Yeah. Uh, in the city, uh, we don't have a lot of comedy festivals, we mentioned that before, so it's nice to have this kind of coming This in. one's going to be super huge, and out and check it out. they're attached to some really cool breweries, so... You know, like we said, Overflow is October 17th. Last episode, right. Vimy is October 18th. October 18th. And is there a third one? Straight yeah, Dog. Straight, straight Dog, October 19th. Of course. Yes, yeah, yeah, day, day, day. Bam, bam, bam. Are all they, three in a row. They're going to be different shows, right? They're all different shows. All absolutely. different shows. Head, the to, festival. head to uh, Dirty Birds Comedy Festival.com and uh, check it all out. There's links to all the tickets for any area of the town. We've got them northeast, southwest. we got them out in the suburbs, folks. There's a bunch of stuff there. Yeah. So head to DirtyBirds.com and you'll find out. You're going to paid for this right yeah absolutely awesome okay then yeah, we yeah. can promote the shit out of yeah, it this is, this is me promoting the shit out of it because uh, those are my stages <laughs> like please come to these uh, shows guys yeah like, we need beer money or beer like in these breweries new macbook money yeah yeah if you haven't heard our why we're on minnesota's Minnesota episode one. Yeah, go back to one. It's, only, 20, it's only 28 minutes. It's only 20 minutes. You'll have fun. It'll be yeah. fun. We'll There's no right. ads. Sorry. Um, yeah, and no air melodica. No. No, not this time. Oh, damn. But there is a boomerang. A boomer. Roy, boomer. Oh, it didn't come back to me. Well, you, you piece of trash. You threw it underhand. I know. You threw it soft pitch style. I wanted style. to, like, kind of catch the pink panther in the face. Oh. It didn't work. He's only pink because the foam is pink. What, does he identify himself as, like, green? I don't know. Maybe he's colorblind. True, true. Like dogs? Are dogs colorblind? i got to stop smoking so much weed with you. We didn't really smoke that much. It's a lot for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, owner of Absolute Comedy. I'm going to tell this story. Oh, shit. He's colorblind. J oh, that's yeah, right. He's colorblind. <laughs> <laughs> I, found, I, found that, I found that out because I have a story because my, my brother-in-law's colorblind and so I wrote a joke about how we went to Subway and he called the orange cheese the green cheese. He didn't, this isn't a real story by any means, right? Or he's orange and red. It was orange and red. Like he called the orange cheese the red cheese, orange cheese the red cheese, orange cheese the red cheese. Yeah. And at the end, he, he, he's, he's definitely like, no, 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 I'll have the green cheese then. It's, it's a long story it's it's not really worth the punch i don't tell it that much anymore <laughs> uh but i i told it once and he was there and he came up to me afterwards and he was like he's like you know i'm colorblind and i found out he's like he's like i think it was like after he bought a car that was supposed to be one color and yeah, it was yeah, another it was color. but it was also part of the reason why absolute comedies are like really like bright purples and green <laughs> yeah <laughs> he, he was like he's like yeah I'm a little colorblind. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't, in fact, until his 50th birthday party that Colin O'Brien got him a pair of glasses. That oh. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> he got him a pair of glasses that allowed him to see the right color. And he turned around to look at the stage and he's like, oh, my God, this is fucking horrible. <laughs> Let me choose this shit. <laughs> this is like 12 years 12 later. Years. Oh, this is like, this this like is just a couple years ago. When he did all these comedians like, using these photos of this stupid purple green. Yeah, purple <laughs> green light. Oh, oh gosh. We love yeah. you, Jason. Don't fire we, me. Yeah. Yes. We weren't being paid to say that either. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you're talking about uh, this week we're going to talk about uh, breastfeeding. Yeah. Well, could, we mentioned it on the last episode that we wanted to talk a little bit about that journey. Yeah. That journey. 
But before we really get there, like, Chris, it's almost back to school. You've got a kid going into grade one. Oh, yeah. Right? What the fuck? Tell me about all this back to school shit. Because I was, I saw in Walmart in like an ad in the States. This isn't here. They've got fucking back to school bulletproof backpacks. Oh, USA, you're number one. <laughs> number USA, one. You're number, number one. one. <laughs> Donald Trump. <laughs> nah, you know, if we had those up in Canada, it would be like, hey, you want to go to school on hailing days? You can just wear the bulletproof fucking helmet. You know, up oh, that is your backpack. <laughs> yeah. Oh, or, and, like, you could use it as fencing armor. <laughs> yeah, fencing armor, for sure. I bet you it's solid enough that you could pick it up and use it as, like, a punch bowl. <laughs> He's just upside down. Oh, look, it's a punch bowl. What? <laughs> I don't know. Is it like a hard backpack or is it just like kevlar i don't i it, we don't what, really know what these things are made about, yeah, but like yeah, yeah. but it says they're bulletproof yeah. which you know when i'm thinking about back to school i'm thinking about gun safety totally <laughs> i'm totally thinking about gun safety that was the first thought of my mind today as i bought back to school supplies no. did, did you buy a backpack today oh we did yeah. yes we did got we, eddie picked his own out he was ready for it was it bulletproof uh no no i know but uh, honestly, the the camouflage bulletproof ones were all out, right? So uh, just, you know I, they're an early seller, right? You they nev- super are, and it's really strange you, you have to go to know, Cabela's for it. You yeah. never know what school is going to be the target this year. No, yeah, that's true. You just never know. And but it's my white school, so it should be legitimately a concern for me, right? Have you talked to your kid about gun safety? Yes. Because, like, you guys live out in the country, right? Absolutely. So, like... He doesn't even get toy guns at the house. No? And when, no, and when the toy guns come in, I uh, teach them how he has to play with them. Well, like, what type of toy guns? Like, cap guns or water guns? Cap guns. Uh, water guns are a little bit different in the summer, because I've explained that different. But, like, anything at, like, Nerf or anything along those lines, uh, like, uh, anything with projectile, I'm like, Eddie, you can't just shoot that willy-nilly. And even the ones that look like replicas... But don't do anything. Mm-hmm. You can't shoot that at me either. You can't point it at anybody's face. No. Maybe you put it to the ground. I'm like, no, it doesn't go there. And then that's not what this does. I'm like, when I when I was like in grade seven them. and eight and even younger, there were I remember the dollar store, Dollarama. They used to sell these black replica handguns Hang-guns. that you would put orange bullets and orange rubber bullets. You'd cock it I mean, and you could shoot it. Man, and you got hosed on this stuff. The oh. stuff I got at seven and eight years old, I had replica AK-47s and Uzis. I had I had an arsenal as a child. I swear I could have made my, in fact, tried to make my own like war movies with all the we replica did that. Props. We did like yeah. we would do like action movies and spy movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mine were like literally war recreation stuff. It was crazy. Yeah, so, dude, you had to really, you know, you really have to cut out like the Nazi stuff. What are you talking about? <laughs> this is Vietnam. I, I was watching a lot of Vietnam stuff. I, in your I was trying okay. to make a joke. It, it really <laughs> fell flat. You know when you think like you see yeah, a big joke duck, in your kids, head? And kids yeah. duck stepping down the street does freak a lot of people out. Not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> you also laugh like that too a little bit. She's like, oh, look, they're cute. But they're fucking racist. Ugh. Horrible. Um, All jokes aside though, like we teach gun safety at the house because uh, a gun is the ultimate tool. And do you guys you, have a gun? Uh, I do not. No? no, I do not have them on the property. No, okay. No. Uh, I have. Uh, well, actually, technically, I do. I have a low velocity uh, Hilti fastener. That's a gun. Okay. I load caps into it, and I, I load oh, yeah, twenty two yeah. shells yeah. into it, and I load projectiles in it. We use that in kind of like setting up this. Didn't yeah, we? yeah, exactly. yeah. That's yeah. like, but that's a tool, right? Like it is you're a tool. saying, but every gun is a tool. You're using it as a tool, and you're yeah. not using it as a weapon. No, which is the difference that we are like, and that's right. As you're saying. A gun is a tool, not a weapon. Yeah. Right? And well, if you're it's, using it, uh, it's the ultimate tool. It's the ultimate yeah. weapon. That's for sure. So, but, yeah, we teach gun safety around the house. And I can't wait for the, the day. The day's coming because I've been stockpiling uh, several guns and uh, <laughs> Nerf uh, devices. I should clarify that one. I've been Nerf stacking guns. some guns. Yeah, I'm like, I'm like, Chris. <laughs> Chris what are you so talking about? <laughs> well, also, all this fertilizer to for make, the wife's garden. I'm going to make the ultimate war movie. <laughs> <laughs> Spielberg ain't got shit. No. So, um, no, I've been stacking up like Nerf, uh, Nerf guns for Eddie when he's old enough to like really appreciate it and get like some okay. safety glasses. So you're going to, you're going to bring it in and you're going to like have some fun with it later. Yeah, we're going to have some fun with it but later. But right now you want him to learn the respect for it yeah. first, right? Yeah. And that's important. I think that's super, that's super important. important. 
So yeah, and then. Uh, so yeah, I didn't mean to like. I no, didn't mean I'm done to. Uh, you know that, but that's a major concern, and, and with kids going back to school in the states, man, it's like it's a fucking roulette game. You're sending your kids on a gamble sometimes, and that's fucking. Horrific. I was I was actually talking to Kate about this the other day, uh, and I think we probably should like we could probably devote like an entire episode to talking about this topic a little yeah, bit for more. Sure. And like, let's talk. We can talk to people who like own guns and talk to the kids about guns safely. And I don't. Yeah, yeah. Talk yeah we'll, to people who we'll work on this right? one. That'll be a future episode. But, we're back up and running. But like, sure. I was talking about how we were talking about the band POD. Do you remember the band POD? Yeah. We are, we are youth of the nation. Youth yeah. of the nation, right? And how like that was kind of like an iconic song to us because like. Columbine was our generation. Yeah. Right. And so like when they started kind of singing about like that experience as we were kind of growing up, that kind of became like as much as it was a shitty song. Yeah. A song that we all kind of related to because that was really like the first one that started to hit like, you know, youth at the time that like the youth were. Well, I was the youth at that time. Yeah, right? I, was, <laughs> I was 19 when Columbine happened and I was actually uh, had skipped the day off of class and drove out with a buddy of mine to see my mom. Uh, and when we got there, she told us about it. I was like, Oh, that's not cool. <laughs> that's an understatement. Heavy. Like, it was. How do you, how do you like, <laughs> you're going back to, uh, how do you, everybody did that. Yeah. Yeah, that's going to be a, a deeper, darker episode that we will get to. <laughs> yeah, talk about uh, something else. Um, yeah, we're talking like, about back to school. Matthew yeah. made a boo-boo and took us on this dark tangent. Yeah, it's all right. Now we're back. Trying to so, make a joke, a so very dark joke. back to joke. school is actually pretty traumatic, and I think that the original back to school, like the first time you send your kids to school, is like super traumatic for parents. Like, did that, you think, oh, what kind of trauma is that? No, there's there's trauma there. Like, the, the mothers are... Like especially sending your my girl Eric Amanda was a mess getting her on getting him on the bus. I got this was last year. Was this two first, years ago. Two years, two years ago. Yeah. So for JK. JK. Okay. Yeah. So for JK and she was just an emotional cry bag and I was like I had to take the morning off of work not for Eddie because <laughs> Eddie was all like I'm getting on the bus and going on adventure yeah my cat buddy have a good adventure and he's like yeah and then you hear like from the back of the bus this is pulling away I'm airing out my ball. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, no, no it was Amanda got her on the bus turned the corner and then I had to hold my wife because she was just emotionally undescribable. It was okay. one of those that's what I'm here for. It's not I was I because when she first said it, she's like, You're taking the day off of work for like and he's getting on the bus and everything. I'm all like, What? What do I need to be there for? Okay. <laughs> I see. You're right, I am. I see. Yeah, no, definitely the morning. Totally the morning. She's like, yeah, I figured you'd just take the morning. It's cool. I'm like, okay, cool. <laughs> well, it was totally for her. And uh, this year was pretty crazy, too, because she, like, wants him to be... Oh, she... Yeah. It gets a little bit easier, but we had a lady behind us today in Walmart who was sending her daughter out for the first time on Tuesday, and we were—I could see that look in her face. She's like, it just, "They're there all the time, and now I've got to put them on a bus and just not have them." And I'm like, "That's that's fucking Stockholm syndrome, ladies! Like, straight <laughs> the fuck up! You're like, I can, <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, and I'm just like, you'll be fine. It's gonna be good. It's what it's for. And uh, yeah, you can. It's a difficult time. It is, and I'm sure." It would be harder because Amanda's Amanda's been a stay at home mom, right? Yeah, yeah. So like, so like she hasn't had that experience of like you know sending her to daycare or or sending Eddie to or Erica to daycare or having like a nanny kind of look after them or like Montessori or something. Like yeah, that. exactly. It's it's, it's been like she's been home, um, and so she's had that longer attachment and bonding. Right? Yeah, like cause way huger. Yeah. How, Eddie was what four when he went to daycare. Yeah, he was four. It was just about turn five. So he, he, so she had him. All day, every day, for four years, pretty much, like, give or take a few days here yeah. and there, right? Yeah. And and then suddenly it's like, uh, now we're going from, you don't see him for the chunk you're sleeping, but you also don't see him for the next third of your day. Yeah. And so you only have a third of your day. You're losing, like, 50% of your awake time with this person. Yeah. Yeah, hu super huge for them, I uh uh, how old's Erica again? Erica's three. She won't be starting school until next year. Next year. Yeah. So next year is going to be another hard year because it's going to go be going back to 
not having someone yeah. in the house. Yeah, exactly. But Erica was still there when Eddie was going to school. That's right. So like that could. So she had the balance time. Yeah. and it was it was good, and um, yeah, it's good. And Erica's like, she was ready this year for sure. She could have gone this year. Yeah, she's but she's, she's gonna, sh- my daughter's going to be a big fish in a small pond. Like I feel that about Erica. She'll just be like. Let's do this. Because the lady behind us who was sending off her daughter, yeah. she was like, oh, is she starting this year? And we're like, no, she has to wait till next year. She's like, wow, she's just a big girl. We're like, I, Erica's just like, I call her Erica of Marathon because she is very tall. And like, she's a, she's going to be a Valkyrie. She's like yeah. legitimately going to be a Valkyrie yeah. like that. Yeah. So anyway, um, yeah, she's uh, gonna. Have she that. looks older than she is. Yeah, like when you, because like I just like I was saying, I saw some photos that Amanda had posted on Facebook today of Erica with the cat. Yeah, and and then you like in my head, I was thinking like she's got to be four or five because of those photos she looked four or five. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, that's it. She's uh, yeah, my baby girl. I'll be next year. Uh, that's when I'm gonna lose my shit. Is next year because like oh my god, she's gonna start your school. baby girl. Yeah, I got my baby girl upstairs. She yeah. has not slept. For more than 15 minutes over the last, what time is it? I don't know, five? Oh my god, it's six. Um, (laughs) I woke her up at 2.45 to feed. Well, she woke me up at 2.45. It was supposed to be 3 a.m. feed. Yeah. And I do the overnight feeds right now, so like, because we're pumping as well as we're breastfeeding. So, um, and this is kind of like kind of leading into our topic, <laughs> yeah, kind yeah. of, kind um, of, sort of. Yeah. Um, so I she woke me up at two forty five. I'm like, okay, that's fine. Like three a.m. feed, that's normal. So like I fed her her three a.m. feed just fifteen minutes early, and then like I went to put her back to sleep, and then suddenly like twenty minutes later she was crying again, and I was like, okay, maybe it's diaper change. No, no, no diaper change. Maybe it's a gas. I'm burping her. No gas. She, and she just keeps rooting, right? She's not, I'm topless right now because, like, it's middle of the night. I'm in my boxers and her, like, in the nursery, and just, like, rocking her back and forth, playing some Brahms. I, like, Brahms is good for babies. More than just his lullaby, which is, like, his Opus 49 or something like that. But, like, he's, he's good. He's always soft. And Yo-Yo Mom does, Yo-Yo Ma does a lot of, like, his shit. So it's nice. So. Neat. I'm just like rocking her back and forth, trying to get her to go to sleep, and she just keeps rooting like for my titty. She wants my titty juice, and I'm like, <laughs> "There's nothing there." Like I'm like, I, I told the nurse if they wanted to give me those hormone injections, <laughs> and that's a committed dad. <laughs> I'd fucking help out. And they said shit would get weird. Shit would get weird. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. Um. And then ever since, ever since, like, it's just been, she's been insatiable. She's been cluster feeding. Um, she has not gone down for more than 15 to 20 minutes at a time. And we, we were doing our infant baby photo shoot this morning. And it took us like four hours because she would not fall asleep. And part of the photos is that you want them to be asleep for some of them. She projectile vomited all over my chest. Do you get that photo? No, this is at like four in the morning. Oh, this right, is at four right. in the morning. And I, if you haven't seen me on stage, or if you haven't just seen a photo of me, I'm I'm hairy. <laughs> and not that you can be like to able to see my chest hair in a photo unless I'm like topless, but we'll include it on the extra. Yeah, yeah. You know, what, this will be, <laughs> the, the the photo for this episode will just be like my hairy tit. <laughs> I I joke about it on stage a lot. Just looking at me, you can tell that I got some extra body hair. Just looking at my arms, yeah. right? He's um, wearing a coat all the time. Exactly, I'm warm. I'm yeah, always warm. Always warm. And so she threw up into it because the like, guy was kind of holding her away, kind of like just kind of burping a little bit and like just rocking gently, and then just <laughs> and it got all sticky yeah, in my chest hair it's and so like I have to wake up Kate because I'm like I have to take a shower like I can't put her back on my chest <laughs> but she's been burped yeah. <laughs> Matt's chest towel literally wore all the vomit and oh. <laughs> it was like and then I had like like it had like a musky odor yep, like it was like it rotten spoiled milk yep, and yep. I was oh. well, it's nice way to have one of those first oh so back to school. What did you guys buy? Uh, shit. Yeah, that's, yeah. A, that's a fucking segue. <laughs> that's a segue. Yeah. Back to school, man. Uh, we we basically 
uh, loaded him up. He's got he got his haircut. He got he got uh, his haircut. Yeah. How often does that he get his haircut? Uh, well, he he's going pretty uh, shaggy for the summer, but he's going to be looking pretty sharp for school. Um, well, about usually every three months. Okay. Yeah. He, How old was he when you did the first haircut? Year and a half. Okay. Did he fuss? <laughs> oh yeah. Well, no, no, because no, I was like. Stay chill, and he was like, "Yeah, okay, stay chill." The yeah. second one we took him to, he fussed a lot. Okay, and then we stopped for like a year and a bit, year two years. I I just I'll cut her hair. Yeah, <laughs> I, Amanda does a lot of that at home too. Like uh, I can't and, cut hair, but I'll cut it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it'll grow back. <laughs> Which leads us to our first ad: Champs Barber Studio. <laughs> Would you like a discount haircut? Everyone does. Five dollars. All you need to do is sit down and trust this maniac with a pair of scissors. Bring a bowl for the easy cuts. Easy cuts only four fifty. <laughs> you get to keep your ear when you go home. <laughs> that is not a guarantee. <laughs> I, I have the special the Van Gogh. <laughs> they come in. All I do is snip off the ear. <laughs> and we're back. Oh, yeah. So, oh, uh, what else we buy? We got a couple of new pairs of shoes, bunch of pants, uh, socks, all his school supplies, uh, and his haircut and lunch. So it's not cheap owning a kid that was like uh, with lunch for everybody was uh, two hundred and fifty dollars. Oh shit! Oh, I also got socks and underwear. Two pairs of shoes, yeah, a bunch of pants. Okay. So that's that adds up. But you know what, here's the thing is like it's we we when we go into this experience, we understand it's gonna cost money. Yeah. Oh yeah, this isn't just like mm, this is going to be low cost. Like but. we it's it's uh we have someone who's growing all the time and we're gonna have to replace everything every few months. But you know what I think uh, Amanda I know personally does a really great job on the buy nothing groups. Uh, anybody listening, maybe you should just join that and, and uh, enjoy the buy nothing groups that are around in on your mm-hmm. local Facebook page. And you know, maybe like because we're gonna do an episode, like a full episode, where we talk about like mommy groups on Facebook. So maybe like at that same time, we can talk a little bit about the good the good Facebook groups to join to help. Yeah, his parents, absolutely. Right? There'll be a bounce later in that one for sure. But yeah, so and I'm also excited for our upcoming segment called like worst mommy post of the week. Oh, yeah, from mommy post of the week. Mommy yeah. post of the week, where we're gonna go through like mommy groups on Facebook and we're going to expose the deepest darkest, darkest shit. Yeah, for sure. Because the fucking threads get carried away. <laughs> I know. Kate's shown me a few. Yeah. She's shown me some of it like the dog pit, right? Because she's in a she's in a Bruce Facebook group about the Bruce Pitt dog <laughs> park. And she'll be like, she'll be like, oh my god. Like, we should call the police on these people. <laughs> I'm fucking murder you and your dog. <laughs> Just the visceral hate flowing oh, through the internet. Like, it's the worst. Oh, super the, bad, the internet's man. the worst. And like, I get sucked up. And just Twitter, Twitter's the worst. I try not to engage in that because I know it's the worst. But the thing is, like, it just makes me so angry. Peep. I mm, don't oh, know. We're good. We're good. Yeah, because if something doesn't bring you joy, you should just kind of keep it around to make sure it has all your misery and attention. And then this thing is that, like, Twitter tells me what to be outraged about. That's it, right? <laughs> it's my fucking compass. It's my outrage compass. Like, it, like, it shows me where I sit on, like, the right, left, center. <laughs> like, it's like, it's like, I agree with that. I don't agree with that. <laughs> yeah. Fuck census. Just get on Twitter. <laughs> It's funny. We actually, uh, I engaged with, um, oh, I tweeted this on our Facebook page or on, on our Twitter. I tweeted on this Twitter, on, our yeah, Twitter on our Twitter about oh. how I engaged with like someone from the People's Party of Canada uh, on Twitter and we were going back and forth and, you know, he's talking about fake refugees and shit like that. And then at the end, like I'm, I'm trying to explain to him like how Max and, Max and Bernier, their, their leader is just a transphobic piece of shit, right? And I'm like, I'm trying to get him to like just engage on that aspect of it uh because he's not he's he's always hitting back with like oh this fence is only gonna be along this border uh 
you know, shit like that. He's not, he's not giving me anything like that's worthy of, of attention. And I'm like, and here's your leader. Like, here's, here are the words of your leader. I'm like, we talked about him on episode one yeah. of daddy issues. Maybe you should go check it out. And then he responded, he's like, nah, I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> but thank you for being, what was it, cordial? Being cordial. Yeah. Even though I was like, I was like, <laughs> Maxim Bernier is a fucktard. <laughs> I guess that's what counts for cordial. Well, I know. I said, tra- I said transphobic piece of shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair enough. Transphobic. Fick, fuck tired. Transphobic. Yeah, same. Yeah, that's what. Anyways. So, yeah, the, it's a traumatic experience to send a kid back to school. Um, I, I I don't need... You'll know. You'll know one I'll day. know. I'll know. Until we'll have this recap episode in five, four, five, four, four years. or five years. Four. So, Erica is going to be beat, though. So, like I say, she's... Uh, but at the same time, like, I'm going back to work September 26th. Jesus. I'm only I'm only getting six weeks off, right? And and that's that's fair because Kate's taking like forty weeks, or she's taking like fifty two. She's taking like a Good year year. And a bit. Um, and here's the here's the thing: it's like we're not going to tell you to vote for because I don't even know what Chris's political leanings are. We don't really talk politics. That's no, fine. That's fine. Um, you know, the government that's currently in introduced in March uh, a paternity leave top up. Right. So in Canada. Um, a mother can get 35 weeks of maternity leave uh, covered under employment insurance, what we call EI. We used to call it POGI, and you could join the golf team. Cool. <laughs> what ended up happening, though, is in March, the current government optioned that if one partner takes 35 weeks, the second partner can take an additional five weeks. So we get a total as a couple 40 weeks of employment insurance and I can take five weeks at the same time that she does. Right. I'm taking a week unpaid as well, just because like, I want to have some time off of work. Fair enough. You know, you have to love what you do. <laughs> Don't want to go there every day. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, and I'm not talking about my, my therapy or my comedy. I love my therapy and I love my comedy. Those are, those are my, my passions and my, my long-term goals. Um, comedy therapy, comedy therapy. Actually, yeah. it's you know what, it Com- works. Comedians in cars getting therapy with Matthew Chan. <laughs> I, I want. I'll be to, driving. I wanted to start a <laughs> podcast um, with with Freddie J and call it uh, Therapy with Doctor Freddie J. Oh Jesus! <laughs> <laughs> That's Uncle Freddie to you guys. Yeah, Uncle Freddie should not <coughs> should not be offering mental health advice. No, I love Uncle Freddie. I do Freddy, too. Uncle Freddie actually has some really good uh, mental health advice because he's lived it. Right, right. Yeah, he, no, actually, yeah, no, he, he came over Saturday and spent some time with with uh, us and with little Maddie, um, and you know we were talking outside, and he actually had some really good insight that um, that I was able to go back to to a client I was like like I didn't share anything about this client situation, right, right, right. but he was talking about his own experience, and he had some really great insights, and it provided me some really great insights that I was like, oh my god. That's very profound. Yeah. And I was able to kind of take that and reflect it back in, to a client of mine that I was working with in a, in a different manner that really actually manifested yeah. Yeah, yeah, for them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So no, it's good. It's great when you find inspiration out of other things. Yeah. If we, yeah. Need to get, we need to get to our topic. We were talking about our topic, weren't we? Was the kids going back to school? And then, like, this has become... From a mini episode to us just rambling. Yeah, know. you know what? And here's the thing, though. Like, we just want to we want to produce fun content. <laughs> yeah, we're hoping that those that are listening are having fun. And please tell us that you're having fun on all of our goddamn socials. You, you, we require your praise. <laughs> <laughs> Not necessarily your praise. We just require your validation. Um, we're, we are on our topic for the week. Yeah. We're on our topic. Yeah. Uh, and here's the thing is like, we also want to hear from you because a lot of parents out there, um, you know, they go back to work at different times, right? It's like Kate's going to be going back to work at like a year and a little bit. I'm going back to work in six weeks. You were working immediately, immediately, right? Uh, and, and that, that, that does impact attachment and bonding. Right. Yeah, but I but I picked up the mantle on the weekends. You know, okay. Like like when it came home and I was I was working four tens, it, I would come home that Thursday afternoon, literally shower, get myself like shaved and ready, and I'd be like, okay, I'll take Eddie, and then Amanda would like not have to do anything. Yeah. We were also a not, four tens is great though, because yeah. oh, four yeah. tens gives you three full days. It gives you seventy two hours plus. 
like the big thing for me is like I'm coming home and we've already agreed I'm doing like six p.m. feedings. Yeah, and I'm gonna do six a.m. feedings. So like up, one of right up, up, up and yeah. down, up yeah. and down, right? And that's gonna be how I get up, and that's gonna probably how I start to like wind down for the night. Um, and that well, dinner with your daughter, very nice. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's cool. Yeah, so it's it's a process that's uh, at least everybody will find it anyway, um, for sure. We want to know how you handle it. If you're a parent, back to school can be tough or maybe back to work, right? Yeah. Because back to work is almost the same thing. Um, it really is in a lot of ways because you're back to the grind and the kid's in there. and, and You're not seeing the kid. In fact, back to work might almost be worse <laughs> <laughs> because it's not only like you might be doing something soul-sucking and you might be just craving that time, right? And a yeah. little bit different where you get to choose what you're doing with your time. Um we want to hear from you though. Like, how did you survive it? What did you do? Dad, did you take any time off? Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. And how long and I, what, what do you find was the best, uh, best time spent on that time off? Like, did you, know, just tell us about it, whether you did it or not. Like I read, I read a headline. I didn't read the, the body of the art uh, article. Sorry, this is our second Minnesota that we've recorded in a row, and we've been drinking since the start of Minnesota 1. And it's been fun. <laughs> <laughs> it's been fun, but we're both getting the hiccups. Yeah. I, <laughs> hey, how's it going? He's patting for beer. He's like, What's going on? What's going on? No, this is like a little bit. Uh, no, but seriously, uh, reach out through our socials. Uh, uh, Facebook, uh, Daddy Issues with Champion Kingsbury. I was Tell just in about... the middle of saying something. Yeah, I know, but it's, we're running long. That's I can't right? remember what I was saying. I was going to wrap not. it up. Yeah, but it was wrapping. We're doing it right now. All right. Right, guys, Great. you guys are fantastic. You are. Thank you. We for love you. Us. Um, we've got tons of shit to talk about with you guys in the future. We hope that you want to talk back to us. Please talk back to us. We're at- so lonely. <laughs> we are. I'm awake all the time now. Okay? <laughs> like Champ, I used to do meth. Wanna try some? <laughs> I'm good. I'm, I'm, I'm good. good. I'm good, good man. Champ I'm likes good. his teeth. Very good. good so yeah, we uh or reach out to us on Facebook at Daddy Issues with Champ at Kingsburg. That's where we're at. Also on Insta at We Got Daddy Issues because we got daddy issues. Yep. Yeah. Uh, we're also on, on Twitter, Twitter, which is Dad Issues. No, no it's shorter. It's at We Got Dad, dad Issues. issues. It's not. Dad it's, dad it's not. We Got Daddy Issues because there is the Just character two cat. the character catch. Yeah. And then, then of course our uh, we email. Got email. Okay. Email is the best, right? Like if you email me, I will see it. It comes straight to my phone. And believe me, I'm lonely. I check my phone a lot. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I said I was lonely. Lonely is the wrong word. I'm, the baby sometimes sleeps. The baby sometimes doesn't sleep. Either way, the baby is loud. Um, I Send it all like, in there. Send it all We in got there. daddy issues, issues at gmail.com. That's it. All right. All right. You know what? Thank you we so need much to for wrap, We need to end this on a positive note. So, Chris, can you please wrap us out? <laughs> Microphone checker. Swing into our lecture. Closing down the sector. Supreme net protector. Never about the lid, but it's best shot. Too hot for TV. But she's It's never meant to be hard, but easy. All in together. Going all in together. It don't take much to please me. Still, folks, never sign a style like the stones. Calling on their mother with the skull and crossbones. All right. We don't, we don't have the rights to do any more to that song. Thank you. Thank you.